Hello friends, I'm Brenda Crouch. I believe the winds of global change compel us to the mysteries that speak to path and purpose. In a time of amplified chaos, there is a divine compass to navigate the conditions that drive our everyday decisions. For the next 30 minutes, we'll explore stories and the knowledge of sojourners who will point the way to the secrets that lie before us. Join the conversation and welcome to Inside Voice. Welcome. I am so glad you're here with us today. We're going to talk about seasons of transition. And, you know, people right now, so many people are in seasons of transition, and those can often feel like uh, something, uh, a time that you're lost, a time that you're searching and wondering. You're not yet where you're going, but you're, you've left where you were far behind. Those are called liminal spaces. How do we get through those times? Oftentimes, they're seasons of loss and grief, and uh, they encompass so many emotions. Well, today's guest is someone that I consider an expert on this particular subject. She's been through many transitions in her life. She is strong, she's amazing, and she's a woman of God, and she is my friend. She's affectionately known as Pastor Michelle, and her name is Johnny Michelle Jackson. She was ordained as the pastor of Hope Christian Church last uh, January in, or in 2019, actually, after her pastoral training for the purpose of succeeding her father, Bishop Harry Jackson. But unbeknownst to her, she would suffer the loss of her dear father and someone who was a friend to my husband and I as well. And then she would be ordained as the uh, senior pastor of Hope Christian Church uh, the following November. So I want to welcome my dear, dear friend today. She is a woman of God. She is uh, a, a pillar of strength, Pastor uh, Michelle Jackson. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Oh, my goodness. It's such a pleasure and an honor to be with you and your program. Well, I love that you've made time. We have had many times of fellowship together, and uh, through this last year, it's been a year of transition for you, and uh, my husband and I ha are we cherish you. Uh, many people don't know that your dad was a dear friend of ours. He was a client of my father's. And so we've all had many uh, seasons of working together and uh, we've, we've had trips to Israel together. So we, uh, it's been such a joy to me and you are a treasured friend. And it's my honor that you're here today. I really want to jump into that subject of um, these transitional seasons. Can you tell us, uh, you know, what it looks like to end well and then start well? Because, you know, it's said that when we, the way we leave one season is how we're going to enter the next. So can you speak to that for us today? Sure. <clears throat> you know, Ecclesiastes 3 teaches us that for every time, for every season, there's a purpose in God. Mm -hmm. And so really um, finishing well is understanding what was God's purpose for me in this time that I'm in? What was he trying to teach me? What was he trying to cultivate in me? And knowing that whatever I'm learning in this season of, of not yet, I'm taking as tools, as knowledge into my season that's coming. So there's nothing that's really lost in the Lord. There's there's no time. There's no pain that we go through. There's nothing, the highs, the lows, there's nothing that we go through in life that doesn't have a purpose in God because right. Romans 8, 28 to 31 tells us that all things are working together for our good because we are called to the Lord. He loves us and he's, his purpose is to conform us into the image of Christ. So if we have that foundation, then we can truly know that whatever we're dealing with now has a purpose in God and that we are not cast down. Mm. So on a day-to-day -day basis, that can be very difficult. We've been mm. in a shutdown. We've been through pandemic-like uh, scenarios. And for everyone, that's been so different. Um, based on what state you live in, what country you live in, if you're if you're outside of the United States, um, what your work life was like in the mm. season in the pandemic, if you traveled, if you worked from home, if you worked in an office, all those kind of scenarios. If your kids were in school or private school, or all those scenarios have affected our lives. Um, in an external sense, but they've also put us in a place of pressure spiritually. And mm. I 
that the Lord has been using that in order to form us. And so uh, you asked, how do we start well? How do we finish well? I think the first thing we really need to um, embrace is that we're in God's care. We're in yeah. his care. We're in his hands. And that wherever we are in our process, whether we're starting or finishing, that mm. God is up to something. He wants to empower us. He wants to cultivate us. And it's an opportunity for us to grow in him. Absolutely. You know, as you were talking about ending well, sometimes we don't feel like we've ended a situation very well. I mean, I'm thinking of people who go through loss in relationship. Perhaps uh, God has pulled them out of something abusive or toxic. Uh, perhaps it's it's because of a death, uh, as in your one of your situations uh, more recently within this last year. Now, I know even before you lost your father, you lost your mother and you had a transition there in learning how to deal with the new normal, how to live in, in, in a time of grief. And um, so I think that, you know, how do we find and glean the good? Uh, I find it so um, ironic, I guess. Uh, it, it's uh, actually beautiful. It's amazing to me that you were already training to be your father's successor when that season would come to you quicker than you expected it to. And so you can almost see the hand of God there preparing you and over you in that season of tra transition, confirming and affirming you and saying, listen, trust me, I'm in this and you're, you're going to be okay. Can you, can you talk to us about those emotional um, passages where we often feel like what good could come from this and how do we glean the good when it feels like maybe it's just kind of a, a sour soup, so to speak? Absolutely. I mean, you know, life is not perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, John 16, 13, <laughs> Jesus told us that, you know, we can have courage because we will have trouble, but that he's overcome the world. So we know yeah. that we're going to go through troubles and, and seasons and pains and trials, but mm -hmm. the courage we can have is knowing that we have victory in him. So um, in many of the transitions that I've been in in my life, whether it be from breakups, mm -hmm. from dealing with toxic relationships, abusive dating relationships, um, I have had significant loss in my life in terms of death. At, mm -hmm. uh, at this moment, all of the adults that helped to raise me and yeah. are now in heaven. My mm -hmm. father's mother, my own mother, and my father. And so in, in those scenarios, one of the things that I learned over the course of the years that that transpired in was one, to be present. So many times yeah. going through um, challenges, we want to look ahead to what's coming instead of remaining present in what we're in. Um, one That's of good. the things I learned was to be present, be present to the pain because pain will teach mm. where we're hurting. It also will teach us where, what is broken. It will mm -hmm. also teach us where we need healing, where we need to invite the Lord into what we're dealing with, invite his word, invite his presence. And so one of the things I learned was that when we try to escape either through even good things, uh, being in church, we try to just push out or get busy in work, or maybe we're choosing mm -hmm. bad things, ungodly things where we're going out, we're clubbing, we're, we're getting involved in other things that, that wouldn't honor the Lord. It it may temporarily cause us to yeah. subside, to numb the pain of what we're dealing with. But ultimately, the Lord wants to be with us in our places of pain so that he can bring comfort, but he can also bring his truth um, so that we can know who we are and that he can we can know who he is more clearly. Mm. And so being present um, is one of the biggest lessons that I learned. <clears throat> Um, in Matthew chapter six, it talks about worry and anxiety. And what I found is that I was able to manage worry and anxiety a, a, in the grieving process, even in knowing how to move, how to move into what's next by, by working on today, by being present mm -hmm. today, knowing that tomorrow has enough trouble in itself and God's already been there. Right. So yeah. I 
can I can really live out that quote by Corey Ten Boom that says, you know, you put your unknown future in a known God by living yeah. each day, by allowing myself to receive the wisdom of God, the presence of God, the nurture of God mm-hmm. today, knowing that he's going to be with me in the next day. And doing that next right decision, um, making those appointments that are necessary, whatever it may be in your life that you have to get done that can't be put off, being fully present to those people Mm. in those places. I think that helps us to steward the moment well, which also helps us to end well, right? Mm. Yes. One of the biggest blessings that I have, and I know I'm kind of going here. No, go. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. But, um, but I, uh, one of the biggest blessings that I have with both my father, my mother, and my grandmother is that I was learning how to be present. I don't have any regrets in my relationship with them. So good. I don't yeah. have any un, um, unfinished business with them. Uh, they knew that I loved them. They knew that I supported them. I knew that vice versa. Not that our relationships were perfect, didn't have bumps in the roads. We know, like, we never were offended. Yeah. Of course, yeah. that's the natural family. But at the mm-hmm. end of the day, being present allows you to say those things that need to be said in the moments that they can be said in when you're sensitive to the Holy Spirit's leading, when you're mm-hmm. sensitive to the moment that you're in, and you can receive from Mm -hmm. your loved ones, what you need to know and hear and even family history things and have those things settled so that when they're no longer available to you, you're you're not living with, oh, I should have asked this. I I wonder about that. Mm -hmm. Really have a sense of settling in in that relationship. And that's been a blessing for me because I have a lot of what ifs. I don't have and many, I don't have any regrets in the relationships um, that I, that I had with my parents and grandmother. Sure. Yeah. And I think that's wonderful. I'm, I'm grateful for that for you. Uh, so many people do have regrets in their relationships. And so the starting point from there, I do feel like God gives those opportunities again, because he will meet us in our pain, even the pain of our regrets and uh, the, the pain of say victimization or whatever it is, what, wherever our pain is. You know, I heard someone say a, a wonderful theologian that I respect say that the uh, Shekinah glory is the, in the Hebrew, that term is actually in the female form. And it represents that mothering love of God that settles into our dust. It settles into our dust, in our pain, in our grief. And it holds us there. It mends us there. It grieves with us there. But it is there to rebuild us. And I just think that's such a beautiful picture. Uh, You know, God, in the Godhead, we see uh, the image. We were created in his image. and, And there's such a place for the gifting that he's placed on women. And uh, I know that in this hour, people are needing that mothering love of God. And so what you're speaking to really is that process of becoming in God. And I I really, I, I want you to maybe give us a little more insight on how we overcome those hangups and those habits and the things that maybe the old mindsets that we had in the past that are now challenged in this liminal space where we, we suddenly, we can't rely on those things anymore. And we're having to learn new tools. How do we do that? And how do we find the good when it's painful to us? And we just don't really know who we are, or where we're going. So I think the challenge for all of us is that we are um, in Christ and we are becoming new and that Mm -hmm. whole process is happening on a daily basis. Yeah. We are going to be consistently in this process of becoming until we're with the Lord. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I think, you know, as human beings, especially as Americans, we love a finished product. Right. (laughs) uh, The feeling of perfection. Yeah. Even society puts a lot of things on us as constructs to say Mm -hmm. perfection looks like, what a finished product looks like. But the idea that we would consistently be cultivated and groomed uh, by the Lord kind of lends to scripture in the sense that there are a lot of agrarian, um, agrarian metaphors 
plants have seasons of growth, of pruning. And so I think that that's a better way of looking at our lives. In the- Very good. Um, and so I would say that one of the things that, you know, if anybody's dealing with regret that's with us today or dealing with a deep sense of guilt or seeing condemnation from the past and feeling like, man, if I would have known what I what I know now, then yeah. life could be different for me. Mm-hmm. That's the beauty of being in Christ because we really are having those moments often, <laughs> at least mm-hmm. I am, where right. the Lord is bringing me into a new, t- a new, a new terrain, a new understanding of him growing in revelation uh, of who he is and who he can be to me and me opening my heart to receive more of who he is into my life lets me know my own limitations And Mm -hmm. even the places where I just didn't understand, I just didn't know. And so um, in Romans chapter 12, the Bible teaches us that we are not to be conformed to this world, but to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. And so part of how we grow better and do better is recognizing that our connection with the word of God, our connection to being being a host of his presence really is how we continue to grow in him because we are leaving one place and going to the next, right? Yeah. Just as Abraham followed the call of God and said, okay, I'm going to leave Ur of Chaldean and I'm going to go to the place that God's going to show me. We're metaphorically doing that in Mm -hmm. our day-to-day life. We're not, not many of us are actually picking up our homes. Although some of us, God does call us to move to a new state. Right or move to a new place, or move to a new job. But typically, in our day-to-day, we're able to continue to journey with the Lord. And part of that is being renewed in our spirit, being renewed in our mind, to really be Mm. able to take a hold of, who does God say I am? What does he say I can do? Mm. And knowing Mm. I can be what he's called me to be if I'm allowing him to bring me into a fuller understanding of, who he is and yes, that he's given me and the endurance that he's given me, the capacity he's given me to do what he's called me to do. Um, mm-hmm. One of the most powerful truths that we can ever uh, take a hold of as individuals is that those who put their trust in God will never be put to shame. Meaning the things that he's called us to do, he's going to equip us to do. The things that he's called us to do, he's going to strengthen us to do. And when we trust him in the process and we don't lean on our own understanding, Mm -hmm. he really is able to go the distance with us. And we can see things that we we would have never seen if we didn't say yes to this journey with the Lord. That's so good. You know, as you were talking, I was actually getting a picture of um, uh, Isaac in the the Old Testament and how that, you know, he had this journey and he he kind of paid the piper, you know, for some of the deception with his brother Esau. Uh, he's, you know, spends almost 21 years kind of being taken advantage of and he, he's out, decides God's moving him forward. And he's in this really kind of a liminal space, if we really think about it. And he ends up where he realizes his brother is coming. He's been told his brother's coming. And, and in my heart, I'm thinking, he's thinking, this is the guy that knows that I'm, I'm kind of a fraud on, on certain, a certain basis. And uh, he sends his family forward. He's there at the River Jabbok, which is, represents an emptying out. And I'm thinking of this space. This, it was a dark night, and he meets the angel or the, the God-man, uh, and he wrestles with him all night long until daybreak. And in that place, he was then, you know, as he wrestled, he was uh, touched in the, in the, the thigh or the, you know, the place really of reproduction for a man. And in this place, that's such a powerful picture. Um, This is where he, he saw himself. He, when he asked him, what is your name? And he says, I am Jacob and meaning I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm a deceiver. And I think we have to face these things in ourselves and they are painful. But God's mercy is there to touch us in that place of reproduction where life comes from. And we never walk the same again because it's in this place that we are not just humbled, but we are changed and we're given a new name. He says, your name is now 
Israel, meaning a contender. So you, my friend, are a contender. You're a contender for Christ and an ambassador of Christ. And, uh, you know, you contend well. And could you speak into that and just minister to those who feel like perhaps everything's over? They've made too many mistakes. They've had traumas and they just are stuck. Help them to, to know how to steward over a disciplined mind and have the mind of Christ and that find that new identity in him in this season. Can you, can you speak to that? Absolutely. You know, one of the beautiful gifts that we have is self-awareness and Mm -hmm. you have been through um, great loss, great trauma. You've been a victim, been victimized. Um, One of the most important things that you can do in this time is, is, is really receive the gift of self-awareness, meaning understanding what your responsibilities are to the mm-hmm. circumstances in your life and the parts that were others' responsibilities. Because what that's gonna do is allow you to be able to begin to release forgiveness to yourself for um, the things that you cannot change, but also release Forgiveness to those who have uh, maybe victimized you or caused traumatic events where it is their responsibility that boundaries were overcrossed. Maybe you were mm-hmm. a child and you were abused by a parent or a family friend or um, in a domestic situation where boundaries were crossed and and you uh, were painful things were inflicted upon you. You know, we have to walk in forgiveness in order mm-hmm. to free because if we want to receive the forgiveness of the father, we have to also release that forgiveness to others. So self-awareness is going to help you to know where are the areas in my life that where I have to take responsibility and then where do I have to release forgiveness to others where it was their responsibility and I became a um, a casualty of the circumstance, mm-hmm. right? So that's so important for you to do because a lot of us carry false guilt and carry, and carry false burdens trying to carry the responsibilities that were others, right? Mm-hmm. So that's the first thing, self-awareness. Second thing is that there are consequences to decisions, right? The Bible teaches us that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So now that we are in Christ, we've confessed him as Lord and Savior, as master and king of our lives, we have the opportunity to walk in freedom. But that doesn't mean that we don't live, we don't have to live through and learn through consequences of former sin patterns or mm. consequences of poor decision making. Good. Perhaps we spent money excessively in a former season, but God is cultivating us in us um, a good stewardship. So mm-hmm. we'll have pay our bills on time. We'll have to deal with (laughs) things, right? It's a consequence of a former season, but it doesn't mean that God's not with you in the midst of what you're going through now. So number one, self, self, self awareness. Number two, recognizing uh, what's mine and what I have to walk through. And then number three, recognizing that the Lord is going to give you strength and the tools that you need to be able to handle it. He's not asked to handle this on your own. Mm-hmm. The Lord has never abandoned us, even in our yes. moments where we maybe didn't even know him. You know, if you would pray and ask the Lord to reveal to you, he'll show you exactly where he was in your journey in those moments because mm-hmm. he's, nev- he's never left us. The Bible declares that he will never leave us. He will not forsake us but that he seeks us out to know us. And so there was an appointed time in your life for you to come to know the Lord. And even now, as I'm speaking to you, as I'm ministering to you, this is a moment now where you can begin to know him and know the fellowship in your suffering with him so that he can bring you through into a place of wholeness and peace. Mm-hmm. And so those are the, the tools that I would encourage you to, to lean into and to embrace in this season of wholeness and healing and the opportunity that's in front of you to be made whole in Christ. So good. That's so good. We have, you know, been kind of programmed, I think, to believe that God's just got this big stick and he's, 
beating us up and condemning us for things that we do wrong, we do ineffectively. And uh, really, it's the mercy of God and the love of God that pursues us because he sees the bigger picture. And so I think learning to trust him in those seasons and trust his love, that it is love that, that is motivating. We are, uh, we can leave that orphan mentality and, you know, we're not alone. Just exactly like you said, we, we, we can come home. We can break free from that and come home. And you said that so perfectly because we are never alone or abandoned. And I just appreciate that so much that that perspective is what has to change. So, you know, oftentimes when we're in the middle of uh, that emotional liminal space, it's uh, we're also being attacked with those fiery darts of the enemy, all the, the negative lies and the old narrative that we once lived by. But uh, that's where God wants to bring in a new narrative. Is that correct? Absolutely. You know, one, one of the things that we can always remember, even in your day-to-day, is that we cannot change the past, but with the mm-hmm. Lord, we can co-author a new story. So each mm-hmm. and every day we encounter, Lamentations 3 says that we encounter new mercies each and every mm-hmm. day. And so, so good. enter into that place of understanding and living in the moment, right, being present mm-hmm. in the moment, then I can say, okay, Lord, in this place, I have weakness. So I, mm. I take on your strength, right? Mm. I don't have the words to say, to address with my children about and contextualize for them the path that we're on now as a family, as we heal through the pains of the past. Mm. In my weakness, he will give me the tongue of the learned. He will give me the language and the words to speak, to bring healing to my children. Mm even to my spouse, if there's infidelity or other issues that have Mm -hmm. come in to cause problems in the family, Mm -hmm. the Lord can give us the, the, the words to say that bring healing. If we're willing to have that self-awareness to know that this is a weakness for me, this is Mm -hmm. an area where I need the Lord to teach me, to help me to be strong, to be effective in these areas. And so we can't really have self-awareness if we don't have God awareness. as That's well, so good. Right? We have to be aware of who he is and the fact that we're being conformed mm-hmm. into his image. And so the more that we can spend time with him through his word through and worship, then we can be more self-aware saying, okay, I'm leaning on my flesh in this aspect and I need yeah. to show me how to be conformed to his way of doing things. And as we do that, scriptures come alive to us. And then we're able to speak the word, speak God's word, homologio, say what God has said over mm-hmm. us. And Amen. We, let that be a part of uh, who we are. Because now we're yes. part of the family of God. So we take yes. on his image, we take on his DNA, we take on his family name, and we have a new identity and a new place, a new, a new standing in him. And understanding that it's in our weakness that he is made strong. And that's not saying that we we never attempt to grow, but that it's in our weakness as we acknowledge that and we bring that to the Lord. His strength enters us. It takes us to that new place of growth and it works through us even in our weakness. And I love that, that what a loving father I am just, uh, I'm so glad that you could join me today, my friend. It's been, the 30 minutes is going by too fast. And um, I'd love to do this again. (laughs) We got to do this again, because you're just a a plethora of um, amazing strength and wonderful insights and wisdom. You uh, were raised by two amazing parents that we dearly love. And uh, I am sure they're smiling down on you right now in this season and cheering you on with the hosts of heaven. And I want to continue to bless you in your ministry. And how can people get in touch with you um, as they might need a continued strength and mentoring? Uh, how can they get in touch with you? Sure. Um, I currently lead Hope Christian Church. And so you can find us at the hopeconnection.org. Um, you can also go on my personal website, 
which is beautytradesashes.com and um, interact with me there. I post a lot of these kind of short teachings on YouTube. So yeah. you can find me on our YouTube channel, which is Grow With Hope. And I would love to connect with you and be able to help you in your journey to wholeness. And if they want to come visit your church, you're in? I am in Beltsville, Maryland. <laughs> so we're just, uh, we're just outside of the Washington, D.C. area. So yeah. if you ever hear, um, as, as they say, in traditional church, the doors of the church are open so you can come visit us. We'd love to see you um, in our Amen. Awesome. Thank you so much for being with me today. We'll do it again for sure. And thank you folks for joining with us. I hope you have been encouraged and that you too will continue to move forward through your transition and your liminal space. I love you so much. I'll see you again next time. I'm Brenda Crouch. 